I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm with, what's your name? Honor. Where are you from? I'm from Dublin, outside of Dublin. And you told me you came a long time ago, you were oh. at the beach in Croatia. On holidays? Tell that story, that's amazing. Yeah, I came to Croatia in um, 1989 and was here and knew about Medjugorje but it was too far. Came back the next year, my four children ranging from 16 down to six and we came on a day trip but we left very early in the morning, six. We were here for the mass and we went into the church and I had never experienced anything like it. It was extraordinary. The, just this feeling of total peace and just a spiritual feeling I hadn't had and there was a lot of stuff going on in my life difficulties at home and I was here and you know a little bit worried about things so I went to the Eucharist and I came back to the seat and it's like as if the whole I was no one else in the church but me it was just enveloped in this love and this light and I started to cry and my daughters were looking at me and but I didn't care, I wasn't embarrassed and I just, we came out and we met the guides and they were very good guides and they told us the story. I knew a little about it here from some lady that helped me with the children but I thought it sounded, you know, a little bit over the top maybe yeah. but I was yearning to know more mm -hmm. and she told us that the guys and one of the guys had been in the IRA so my sons were fascinated and they had a conversion in prison and then went on to be a priest later but he was so inspiration my, my son Stephen was fascinated so they went to Apparition Hill I stayed with my youngest daughter in the cafe because she was tired mm -hmm. and they came down and then the guide met us all there was about 25 in the group from the hotel and we were all due to go back down that evening for dinner to, to our resort. And the guy said, maybe you'd like to stay for the apparition. And everybody said, yes, yes. So in those days, it was in the church, in the loft, in the, uh, you know, in uh, the, the upstairs of the church. So we were all outside and everyone was praying the rosary in different languages. And I just, could, there was French and Italian and German and, Portuguese even and then the English somebody started and I had a little rosary and my son knelt down and we'd never really said rosaries at home I took them to church and all but and he started praying the rosary and I could feel so moved you know young guy of 16 like into the pop music and the sport and here he was praying and suddenly we looked up to the sky and we saw this magnificent color uh, rainbow colors and it's like as if the sun came down in the form of the Eucharist and there was a cross in the... But I was so... I was there because it was so extraordinary, all this happening. So then, then the, it finished the apparition and oh yeah, also the birds. We knew, noticed the birds stopped the minute the apparition started. There was all these birds tweeting and there was silence. So that was the end of that. So then we were all there. But I was... I could hardly speak. <laughs> all this had happened. And coming from a, a resort down with all the bars and the beach to be brought into this spiritual enclave. So we went, on, so we went back down to the hotel and I couldn't. And I was on the bus and it was like, all I wanted to do was go back to Medjugorje. I didn't want to go back. But we resort, had, no? Yeah, just stay. Yeah. So we went back down and uh, we finished the holiday. We, we went home and things were not good at home my husband wasn't well and there was difficulties with our in it's very difficult but the only thing i wanted to do when i got back home to Dorky was go to mass and there was an evening mass in the parish and i had arrived late the night so very tired the next day but i got and i was down i just was like propelled i was like drawn and i remember meeting the local priest and he was not too keen on Medjugorje. He said, oh, I don't hear. I said, Father, I said, I, I've never experienced. So he listened a little bit, but you know, mm -hmm. but so then every sort of daily mass. And then I said, I have to go back to Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. So there was the next week in the church, I see a sign. It was a group going uh, in October. So I booked it, arranged babysitters, off I went, but arrived here Thunder, lightning, rain, wind, fork, everywhere, chaos, dreadful flight. And all these people, they were very holy people, they were coming. And I was just a beginner, really. 
I said, oh, what have I done? And I arrived and we stayed in a little farmhouse way out. And I said, I don't like it at all. This isn't, what am I doing here? We were all sharing rooms and the back, but the family were beautiful. I remember being so impressed with the warmth of the family and the granny coming up with the fruit and the wine. So anyway, there was three priests with us, which was very good. A young priest in particular, I got on well. He was, for, he was working out in South America. So anyway, the first few days, as I said, it was cold, wet, windy. I said, this is different than what I remember in. This isn't like, I don't feel anything. I think they're all a bit too much. And oh, I said, I wish I was going home. So anyway, there was a beautiful woman in the group. She was Italian. She lived in Ireland, Miria. And she was the most beautiful, holy, spiritual, kind lady. So she could see me a bit, you know. Shana, don't worry, you, you will be fine. And I met Father Slavko through her. Wow. So when I met Father Slavko, and he put his hand on me, and he said, Our Lady wants you here for a reason. So that was the beginning of it. And then that night we went to his adoration. And it was still cold, but it wasn't as bad, it wasn't as wet. There, there was, and he came down the whole center aisle of the church with the with the monstrous and the and the Eucharist to each person all around went outside and there was a little Down syndrome boy and he went to him and he put and he oh I was just I could feel myself so things went very good I started pray trying to pray more and on Friday they were going up please fact and I said to Mary, oh, I don't want, I'm not very fit. I don't want to go up the mountain. And she said, no, no, we will go slowly. You will be fine. You will be fine. So anyway, and also the sun had come out. It then was 28 degrees. So I said, this is good. I'll get some suntan going home, being silly, vain woman. So anyway, we went on the mountain and we broke away from the group. They were going very quick. And we were, and she had Father Slavko's prayer book. Uh, for the stations and she was reading in this beautiful gentle voice and I could say, oh and then I don't know what station and maybe the fourth station she was kneeling and I knelt down and she started praying for my children and she named each child and I just got so uh, uh, emotional to hear their names and suddenly I just reopened my heart to Jesus to God and I heard this voice saying be not afraid I go before you and I thought the priest had come back with the prayers it wasn't an interior voice it was like as if I had a he um, ear it was a voice of G and it was the most beautiful voice that you could ever imagine and I was there and I said to Miriam but she said, what do you expect? She was, didn't think anything. Because she, she had seen extraordinary things here and she was so, so close to Our Lady. So I got up, I ran up the hill. I don't even feel. I got to the cross. I put my hands on the cross and it was like as if a whole, my body, a, a whole, everything was taken away that was worrying and, and just I've given a peace. And I remember crying, crying. But I didn't care who saw me and I would be self-conscious. So I came down the mountain and I met a lady and I met her years after that. And she said, excuse me, she said, you must have had experience. And I said, yeah. She said, she said the Holy Spirit is shining out of you. I can see. And I met her, as I say, about five, six years later. And she said, you're the woman. I'm, I said, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we came back down. I was so happy. I felt, well, it was such an experience. And um, that last day, there was a mass. And CNN were here then, because it was early days. They were filming this mass in the Adoration Chapel. And the priest said to me, would you do a reading? And I said, oh no, I said, I, I'd be too shy. I couldn't do that. I'm not. But look, he said, the other people were all from rural Ireland and their accents, they said, well, you've a plain voice, you'd be good. I said, no, no. He said, well, the Lord is asking you, just put your pride away, you go and do it. So I said, okay. So I went and I did it and it was okay, all right. So I came back to Ireland and that evening down to the mass again. And the first thing the priest came up and said, can you be a reader? 
we need readers. So I felt it started here and so I took on the ministry and I'm reading now since 30 years in my parish and I never, now sometimes you have to struggle and the devil will get into situations. I'm separated now seven years from my husband, but I'm in my own house. I'm happy, the children are okay, they, it's not ideal, but they knew it was difficult for many years. And one of my daughters came out here and worked with Father Slavko after the war. And my other son is a faith, he goes to mass. My other two, no, particularly my youngest daughter. But through Medjugorje, I had a life-changing experience. And I'm not saying it made everything perfect, but it, it, you never lose the, the, the faith in the Lord and Jesus. And I've been back here now, I've lost count. I come sometimes twice a year if I have the money. And this time I wasn't going to come. And then I said to her lady, look, make things happen that it'd be easy. I'd booked a flight, but there was problems. I have a small little cat and no one was minding the cat. And I was worried about, I said, oh, I don't think I'll go. And, I, and then my daughter said, I'll come and stay. I'll mind the cat, you go. So I was here and I'm with my lovely friend, Catherine. And I'm here since 12, 10 days and I go back next week. But I hope to still live the message and to bring the hope of Medjugorje back to my parish and to my friends. So and, thank and why do you come back all the time? I'm drawn, yeah, and every time I'm getting older now and I say, oh, I don't think I'll be going this year enough. But I love Croatia anyway, so I was in Split for two days. I still think it's the most beautiful country. Yes, the seaside. The, ho the seaside, oh, the, and the architecture in Dubrovnik and Split and uh, Savtat I've stayed in. So normally I come with a group and we have a few days on the coast and come up, but this time I was on my own. But I'm just drawn back and I think there's something here that's nowhere else because Our Lady is appearing here and the people also. There's a joy and there's companionship and but you're never lonely here, you know. There's always someone to smile and to, and then the ceremonies at night, the, the mass outside with the music, the beautiful music and the adoration. It's like nowhere else and I really, really, and anyone that maybe will be listening to this that hasn't been, Go, come and see and you will be blessed many times and it will change your life and it will give us all a hope and I think we need it now the way the world is and there's a lot of sadness, particularly in Ireland, there's a lot of family dysfunction, the faith people are giving up and it's all materialism but we, we need, there's a hole in everyone's soul I feel and it has to be filled. So I really think Medjugorje has been the most wonderful experience for me. Oh. You prayed the rosary? Now? Yeah, I prayed the rosary and the daily. Or how do you daily. Why you do you pray? What, what, what does it give to you? We, 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 we humans do something to gain, gain something. Yeah. What the, does the rosary? Give the rosary. You? Funny. I used to have difficulty with the rosary. You I do? found it. Yeah. I found it a little bit. But I found a wonderful website, Laudate, and there's Christian Peshkin. He's a young, you know, a German guy, a German guy <laughs> who was converted yeah. from Lutherism. A friend of mine told me, and yeah. I often put his 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 podcast on and say it with him yes. because he says a beautiful little prayer, a dedication, but not too long, in between each decade, and he has a very attractive voice. Christian Peshkin is his name. And I find now, I put that on and I say the rosary, it's, it's easier. Because I do the same YouTube, you can go to Lourdes. Yeah, to, yeah. Three o'clock in the afternoon, live from Lourdes. Yeah, well. and it's easier, isn't it? Because you're, you're, it's somehow, because to sit down alone. And, alone, and it's just sometimes seems to be so long. And, go, uh, you know, Divine Mercy I find easier. But since discovering, so I'd say the rosary every day, I go to Mass unless I'm not well, there's, go to Mass every day and I would have, there's adoration in my parish uh, with Father Jamie, my lovely Father yeah, Jamie yeah, Tui. Lovely yeah. And the video, check it out on the, on the channel, search Father oh, Jamie. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, well and he... So you do the adoration, yeah? Do I do the right? adoration, there's a little adoration chapel mm -hmm. and then on Friday he does a holy hour. So I try and go to as much as I can. Not always make it. Sometimes I'll, I'll say, oh, I'm too tired. But I say, no, that's not good. I, I, you, have to keep, you have to keep the, the momentum going, I think. You know? And it's, it's a two-way. It's God will bring you and Jesus will bring you. But they want you to come back and, and give what you have as well. And I think adoration is a bit like sunbathing in God. Yeah. Do and it, you will see 
so much healing. I see it now in my life. You speed up your healing if you need healing. Yeah. Go to adoration. Sit in the Catholic Church, even yeah. if the tabernacle is closed. You will yeah. receive a lot. An important, important message. I see the last months now. Much yeah. more adoration, much calmer. And you will get the healing. Ask yeah. the question in front of Jesus. Yeah. And be still. God is fighting for you. There. Yeah. And, and you, it's, no? beautiful. it's beautiful. And, and huh? you can feel that it's like a balm. You can feel... Yes. But you have to, as I say, be, you can't just think everything can happen and you do. You have to, to make the effort and say the rosary, go to the adoration. And I also have a beautiful book, The Magnificat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, a daily prayer, it's monthly. Mm -hmm. And it has all the readings of the day and the morning, evening prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's beautifully produced. And then the other thing I recommend anyone is Bible Alive. Wow. That yeah. comes from Birmingham parish in England and every day there's a teaching on the scriptures for the day and a lot of priests I've given it to priests because it's beautifully beautifully and it's very simple mm -hmm. and um, you know there's things like that can help you um, just just to do have a little formula with prayer yes. so really I think there it is again Magnificat Magnificat and, and Bible, Bible Alive, Alive. yeah, yeah. That's from and Manchester, you said England? this is from England and this is uh, international I think it's printed in Switzerland but yeah. it's worldwide yeah. and it's um, I get them posted so it, it you know it's not that much money and it's wonderful to get them to your house and again it's a, a little formula to, to have a little program for yourself because human nature is you know you can especially these days we yeah all distraction yes so this is a little way of focusing on the prayer and it's, it's you know it's wonderful yeah. and it's and so i would like to add if you do adoration pray the rosary in front of jesus it's and it's an even more powerful powerful it's a yeah very powerful combination Creation, the two to go yeah so i'll and be how, how is you know you go to mass every day now why you go to mass every day because well, I received the Eucharist, so I feel that I'm so close to Jesus then. And also, uh, there's a beautiful community in our church in Shank Hill. Um, it, it, people, are, they're just so lovely and there's a great faith. It's a, something about the parish, uh, and again, Father Jamie and Father Michael, the parish. When you go, and it's not long, 25 minutes of your day in the morning, the day goes much better then. You know, it, it, it keeps you, it's, it gives you fuel for the day, your fuel for your soul. And it's a good way to start, it's a little routine. You know, get up, have your shower, have a, go to the mass, because you can, I by nature could be a bit lazy, and I'd be reading the iPad, the paper, the news, and I'm better just to go, go to the church, and then go from there. And, and the day is blessed, you know. So I'd say daily mass is wonderful. If people can go, it's, it's fantastic, you know. Yeah, and how is confession for you? A lot of people are scared to go to confession. They go here often in Medjugorje after 20, 30 years, yeah. and here it seems to be easier. What would you tell people? What is the beauty of confession, and why not be scared? Well, if you think of that you're really going to Jesus and to pray before you go that the Holy Spirit guides what you say, because it is, you always feel self-conscious a little bit and human nature, you just, what I'm going to say, and you, you know, you're going through your, your life and you may be thinking of sins you've been forgiven and then they come back a bit at you. And, but the minute I, I go to confess, before I go, I say, Lord Jesus, just let me be aware I'm with you. The priest is only the, the, in, in representation. But it is quite daunting sometimes. And um, sometimes maybe priests, some priests are easier than others, you know. And if you find one, you might have had a great, go to another priest. Find the priest, yeah, because they will be there for you, you know, and the Lord will yeah. point you. Mm -hmm. So not to be afraid and you feel such freedom after confession because it's better than any therapy or any um, psychiatrist because it, your whole mind is cleared and, your bo and you just feel full of joy from confession even though people are a little afraid but there's no need to be you know they should really just go and 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 trust in the lord really that's oh, how is how is for you fasting that's another stone in magic difficult difficult you? yeah i suffer a little bit um, sometimes in my stomach so I have to be careful uh, not to go too long without food because I don't feel well so I can fast in other ways Friday now I'd never eat meat 
I wouldn't have any wine, I like that anything. I would try and restrict sweet things, but I wouldn't be able to keep the bread and water going. I used to when I was younger, but now I just feel, I didn't feel so, so I've spoken to a priest, so he said, you can fast. I don't look at television maybe on Friday or Wednesday. You know, things deny myself, but I admire people that can do the bread and water. I mean, it is hard, hard. But it's, in Lent, I've done it. I have done it with just maybe a clear soup and bread and nothing else, and just cut down because need to need That's to lose. That's a start. That's a start to cut down something. Cut down. Yeah. Smoking, that, whatever yeah. It is. No, I don't smoke. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't smoke. Used Other to. Other vices you have. Yeah, when yeah. I was young. When I was young, maybe. But I like wine. I don't drink a lot, but I like nice wine, so I wouldn't have any wine. And but I would love to be able to do always the bread and water. But in Lent, I've done it for one, just have one meal and nothing else. But it, it's a hard, but I, it's a powerful, powerful thing that people can do. And I know when they fast, the scriptures can come alive and prayer is more intense. intense. Yeah, because you're, you're cutting away from the yeah the world and you're focusing. So, but I'm always struggling a little bit with it, but I will, I will keep trying anyway and hope. And over the years, what is your favorite spot here in Medjugorje? Did it change over the years? Did Medjugorje change? Um, I would, people ask me that too. And considering that it's 32 years since the first, it's not that different. You still have the beautiful vineyards and of course the mountains. Once you're at the back of the church, I love the, um, the mosaic, the, the uh, luminous mysteries that, that, and the risen Christ. I'm I think that is the most beautiful, beautiful sculptor. And I've never seen, I've been in a lot of places and holy places, but I, that stands out to me. The young, he's an Italian sculptor, I don't know his name, but every time I'm there, it's extraordinary. It's so, and the way you can sit around it. So I love to get to that area and that's very peaceful. And it's away from, I think you need to get away from a bit the fussing and the cafes and the noise you need to not because you could waste your days just walking around the shops and looking you need to get out on your own and walk the vineyards in particular over towards uh, the blue cross and that area that's the same as when i first came so and the church is so distinctive i think uh, you know it's the same it, it it's there's a, there's a, there's a, I don't know what it is, the inspiration of the two towers, there's something about St. Jane's Church is, and the, the beautiful backdrop of the mountains too. It's, so it hasn't really now much more hotels, of course, but then the people are coming here, so they have to, people say, oh, it's commercial, but they need the places to stay, and it's giving employment to the villagers because there's a lot of poverty around here. So, you know, Our Lady is working here in every aspect, I think, and, uh, you know, it's, it's it's just a wonderful place, and I'd recommend anyone... If and they why would you recommend? What would you tell them at the end? I would I just say, please come to Medjugorje and open your heart, and whatever problems you have, you'll be given a new, a new strength through Jesus and through the prayer, and your focus will come off yourself, and you'll see just the beauty of closeness to God, really, and... <laughs> take you out of the, the materialism that we all live in. You'll find a peace here that you won't find anywhere else, but because Our Lady is here. That's the, that's, and I always, people ask me and say, oh, what? And I always seem to think one line is very good. When she first, early days, she came and she said, I've come here to tell you God exists. And that blew me away because that is such a strong statement because there's so much disbelief. So I always say to people, well, that's the message that God exists. And people have come here, there's a couple of, I have told them and they've come and they have had a beautiful experience also. And there's other people have come and said, oh no, I didn't. So I just say a prayer for them and not everybody is going to get the same, you know, thoughts and feelings. But certainly I would say to anyone, if they can come, please come. And can I say the last question is, you know, we have the five stones and I have yeah. the feeling Our Lady wants to teach something else to surrender to God's will. 
did you make the same experience over the year when you surrender your will, yeah. when you live in the divine will, the will? that yeah. you are much more peaceful, much joyful? Oh, a hundred percent, yeah. Because then God's in control, yeah. you're, not you. And you're just, whatever he wants, the way he wants you to live, that's going to be the best way for you because he only wants good for you. And you'll get this peace that you can't find elsewhere, you can't find through other philosophies or other ways of life, you know. So it's absolutely, yeah. It's God, like that. God is so important, in the center. God is in the center. Thank you so yeah. much for that beautiful interview. Oh, thank you very much for